Welcome back everybody to Volatility Trading Strategies. So I've talked a lot about why traders can't just hold long volatility positions indefinitely. This goes for VXX, UVXY, and TVIX. These are not suitable long-term holds. And the reason, to put it as simply as possible, long volatility positions behave like any other insurance product, which is to say they do have a tendency to decay in the long run. And if you think about it logically, of course they have to decay over time, right? If they didn't, and buy and hold long volatility didn't actually decay over time, then everyone in the world would own it at all times, and the markets would completely break down. They wouldn't make any sense. So logically speaking, we would expect to see them decay long term. And in a practical sense, that's exactly what they do. This is a chart of the live performance of long VXX since inception in January 2009. Now remember from my previous video, I'll leave a link here, but the prices of VXX in live trading never actually were over 100,000. But adjusting for all the reverse splits along the way, VXX is down over 99.9% .9 since it launched. And contrary to some people's beliefs, it's not broken and it's not manipulated. It functions exactly as it's supposed to. A long-term bleed of capital with short-term bursts of payouts when the market sees a significant crash, just like any other insurance product. But when people see that chart, the first thing they think about is, well, why don't we just do the opposite? Why don't we buy and hold a short volatility position instead? If buy and hold long volatility is down over 99.9%, .9%, then surely doing the opposite position would be very lucrative, right? That's what we're going to talk about today. So subscribe to the channel and make sure you smash that like button for me. It is the best way to support my work. So does everybody remember the XIV? It was the first inverse volatility ETP on the market and it launched on November 30th, 2010. It was designed to do exactly what we're talking about, to track the inverse performance of the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index. This is the VIX short-term futures index, SPVIX STR. It's the underlying of VXX. It tracks the rolling of the front month VIX future to the next month on a daily basis. The same methodology as VXX. Now again, XIV was designed to track the one times inverse of this, meaning it is essentially the opposite position of VXX on a daily basis. So again, we ask if long volatility in the long run is down 99.9%, .9%, then surely something like the XIV, which is designed to track the inverse performance of that, it should have been a slam dunk, right? But unfortunately, the XIV was terminated due to the February 5th Volpocalypse event. It crashed over 90% in a single day and was delisted. An extreme event to be sure, but it's important to remember that it wasn't just February 2018 that was a rough period for buy and hold short volatility. XIV also crashed minus 74% in the European debt crisis in 2011. It crashed minus 67% in the 2015 market crash. And if it existed, using simulated prices back to the launch of VIX futures, it would have crashed minus 92% in 2008. February 2018 was just the final kill shot among several significant drawdowns, and this is the problem with a long-term short volatility position. There's no doubt it has periods of success when the markets cooperate. Remember, it is the one times inverse performance of the constantly decaying VXX, so it does have periods of success. But inevitably, a big storm will hit, and the hurricane insurance known as VXX will pay off, and then the short volatility position will take its turn and get crushed. This is the live performance of a short VXX position since November 30th, 2010. So the problem of a long-term buy and hold short volatility position should be crystal clear. Although it does have periods of great success when the markets cooperate, 2017 is an example of that, in the long run, buy and hold short volatility is no better than the market. The only reason it's still a little bit higher than the S&P 500 over the last 10 years is because this has been the longest bull market in history, and the maximum drawdown in the market over the last decade was only minus 35%, which was just recently. If we had another extended market crash, a repeat of 2008 for example, buy and hold short volatility would get crushed way below the S&P 500. And looking at the sharp ratio, it's only 0.18. This shows that buy and hold short volatility on a risk-adjusted basis is barely better than the risk-free rate of rolling short-term U.S. Treasuries. Remember that fundamental rule of geometrically compounding investment returns. The larger the drawdown that is suffered, it requires an exponentially larger rate of return just to get back to break-even. And buy and hold short volatility periodically suffers drawdowns in the 60 to 90% range, meaning every time it happens, mathematically speaking, it's a far larger blow to long-term performance than any of the easy gain periods. And it takes exponentially longer to recover from those crashes. 
Remember, in the financial crisis, the short volatility loss would have been over 90%, meaning it had to make over 900% afterwards just to get back to break even, which did take a while. There are no free lunches in investing. Of course, it would be great if we could just hold on to something and watch the money roll in, but investing doesn't work that way, and with respect to the volatility trade, it definitely doesn't work that way. Buy and hold long volatility is a complete disaster. Minus a few periods in between of volatility spikes, it is just a long-term steady decay and this won't change, so a long-term hold is not an option. In fact, I would say that it shouldn't even be held for longer than a few days, or maybe a few weeks in the most extreme circumstances. But long-term short volatility positions are also a non-starter, and on a longer-term time horizon that includes both bull markets and bear markets, a sharp ratio of 0.18 means the performance likely won't be much better than break-even, and it could easily go negative. I can't tell anyone what to do, of course, but in my opinion, both of these are terrible long-term positions. Again, there are no free lunches in investing. In order to get the performance we want, we need to be tactical and we need to have an edge. Personally, my edge comes in careful analysis of a variety of volatility metrics and using them to identify the most mathematically advantageous periods to be allocated to trades, and then making sure I'm in safety positions for the rest of the time when risk is elevated. I get so many questions on both sides of this. It's either people asking if they can hold UVXY or TVIX long term and just wait for a big spike, or they want to allocate a portion of their capital to a short volatility position and just sit on it for 5 or 10 years. As I hope I've shown, doing either one of those would not be wise. Long volatility is a decaying insurance product that will almost certainly continue to bleed capital over time and lose 99.9% .9 of its value. And although short volatility works during calm periods, it can easily give all of those gains back and then some when the markets crash. We can't hold long volatility or short volatility positions in the long run. We do need to be tactical and only take the trades that are the most advantageous at the time. If you want to see how I analyze the volatility metrics and use them to time my entries and exits, head on over to my website, claim your free trial, and check out some of our live trades. You're always welcome to join us. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.